I want to delve direct to the word of God, the secret of effective prayer. The secret of effective prayer. That is our subject this morning. I don't know what you consider to be an effective prayer. Some of us, if you don't speak in tongues, then that is not effective. Some of us, they believe. There are some of us that when you pray, you need to hold a Bible and read some two or three scriptures. And that will be an effective prayer. For some of us, we must kneel down. And that maybe will make an effective prayer. For some of us, we must do some two laps in our houses, up and down. And that will be a complete prayer. For some of us, you must pray the Pentecostal. You shout and you increase the volume at least to three to four degrees. That will be an effective prayer. But what is the secret of effective prayer of a Christian? That is going to be our discussion this morning. And I believe that God is going to speak with us. We're really living in a very interesting time, a season. And the whole year, in fact, people had said that we are not going to have rain. We have drought and famine in this country. It's quite devastating. Recent media reports have shown loss of livestock, and many of you have watched, um, including even wild animals that are able to fend for themselves in a large forest of many things. And it's quite and absolutely sad. And I believe that divine intervention is the key to sort us from this mess. That is the essence why I want to teach you the secret of effective prayer. Some of us believe in long prayers, that that is effective. But God would want somebody to whisper prayer and be an effective prayer that will transform this nation for his glory in Jesus' name. In the Bible, we have a similar situation. We see Elijah, a man mere like us, able to call God to intervene in a situation. And God comes in a divine way. Actually, initially, when the people were living and they were not doing right, Elijah comes in 1 Kings chapter 17, and he says, it will not rain until at my word. He didn't say with my words. He says until with my word. For many of you who have read the book of 1 Kings chapter 17, and it didn't rain. Then later on, he calls rain to come. We'll be reading 1 Kings, the whole passage, later on. And it rains. And one of the kings come and says, you troublemaker. Why troublemaker? At his word, it didn't rain. Powerful word that was able to stop rain to come on the land. And then at his word again, it rains to that land. And so we see this man, Elijah, in James chapter 5, verse 17, being talked of as an extraordinary man that made an effective prayer. And an effective prayer comes when we know who we are. Elijah knew he was a man of God. And he knew he was of God. And in his times of living, Elijah lives and he finds that there were also men of gods. Who are their gods? Baals. You know that story? We'll be reading now. You need to know who you are and whose you are. Amen? And you'll be able to say, at your word. We've just done a holy communion. And Jesus, when he was with the table, when he said the words, and he gave thanks, that was a prayer. I don't know how many of you consider when you meet a brother, I know that I'm work, we should say, God bless you. That's a prayer, my, my elder. How do you believe that a single two words would be a blessing to somebody? It's when you know who you are and whose you are. You will say a simple word. He says, and Lord, we thank you for this bread. Bless it in Jesus' name. When he does that, it was blessed. And then the blind comes, and Jesus comes, and he says, son of man, be healed. Look at those prayers. For us, like you are reveling with the Lord many times, and the vehicle is not going. And he says, pray more. In fact, where we are going to read the passage, he said, ask, your God is sleeping. <laughs> Very ineffective prayer. Turn with me in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18. I'm going to read up to verse 45. 1 Kings, chapter 18, verse 1, all the way to verse 45. The Bible says, 
after a long time, in the third year, the word of God came to Elijah. Go and present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the land. In verse 17, you remember, you say, it will not rain. So it's after a long time. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. Now the famine was severe in Samaria, and Ahab had summoned Obadiah, his palace administrator, who was like a manager to Ahab. Obadiah was a devout believer in the Lord, while Jezebel was killing off the Lord's prophets. Obadiah had taken a hundred prophet, prophets and hidden them in two caves, 50 in each, and he supplied them with food and water. Ahab, had, Ahab said to Obadiah, go through the land to all springs and valleys. Maybe we find some grass to keep horses and mules alive so they will not have to kill any of our animals. So they divided the land they were um, they divided the land um, uh, they were to cover Ahab going in one direction and Obadiah in another. As Obadiah was walking along, Elijah met him. Obadiah recognized him, bowed to the ground and said, Is it really you, my lord Elijah? Yes, he replied. Go tell your master, Elijah is here. What have I done wrong? Asked Obadiah. That you are handing your servant over to Ahab to be put to death. As surely as the Lord your God lives, there is not a nation or a kingdom where my master has not sent someone to look for you. And whenever a nation or a kingdom uh, claim uh, you are not there, he made them swear they could not find you. But now you tell me, go to your master and say, Elijah is here. I don't know where the spirit of the Lord may carry you when I leave you. If I go and tell Ahab and he doesn't find you, he will kill me. Yet I, your servant, have worshipped the Lord since my youth. Haven't you heard, my Lord, what I did while Jezebel was killing the prophets of the Lord? I hid a hundred of Lord's prophets in two caves. 15 each, and supply them with food and water. And now you tell me to go to your master and say, Elijah is here. Elijah said, as the Lord Almighty lives, whom I serve, I will surely present um, um, myself to Ahab. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. When he saw Elijah, he said to him, is that you, traveler of Israel? Now, this is the man of God being referred to as troubler. You need to take note of that. I have not made trouble. I have not made trouble for Israel, Elijah replied. But you and your father's family have. You have abandoned the Lord's commands and have followed the bath. Now summon the people from all over Israel to meet me on Mount Kamel and bring the 450 prophets of Baal and the 450 uh, prophets of Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent a word throughout all Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Kamal. Uh, Elijah went before the people and said, how long will you waver between two opinions? Look at the words of Elijah. If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. The distinction of the two. But the people said nothing. Then Elijah said to them, I am I the one of the Lord's prophets left? But Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophet choose one for themselves and let them cut into two pieces and put it on the wood, but not set fire on it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers fire, he is God. Look at that test of effectiveness. Then all the people said, what, what you say is good. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one of the booths, prepared first, and they did that, and they did that, and it happened that at one point, it is a long passage, 
when Elijah called on the name of the Lord, the, 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 the God came. In a very short span of time, it came. When the birds were given the whole day to pray, they prayed and nothing happened. Allow us just pray for the word of God. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. We honor you and bless your name. Lord, as we go through this sharing, I pray for your manifestation. I pray for your grace. That our prayers and our sacrifices will be acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To, or is it, how long should we weather in these opinions? In fact, at one point when Elijah is asked, he says, will not begin who our God is. Many times we struggle to look and seem like we want to defend our God. Uh, the secret of effective prayer is just to know who you are. Elijah is actually in a debate of 450 prophets. By the way, you are less than 450 here. By my quick maths, because I get maths in this place. So Elijah was a single man against all of you. Was a single man in a congregation like us. And here are people who are wavering in two opinions. Now, I have, have chosen an administrator who is a devout man. You need to take care of that. That there is an Obadiah serving a king that does not subscribe to God, but he has chosen to follow God, and he has taken the prophets of the Lord, and he has hid them in a cave. Take note of the cave. Where is your cave? Where is your cave? He puts the two, uh, the prophets 50-50 in a cave. And the people are able to worship God and he kills the other prophets. But God comes to demonstrate that he is a good. So what are the secrets of effective prayer? Um, we'll just be looking at two, three things. One is the connection. The connection. The connection. You know, uh, I told about vehicles. Some of you drive menu. When the vehicle is in the right gear, it just speaks. You don't. The connection. The other thing that I see here is the closeness. Elijah seems and he is connected to God. And the other thing is the closet, the cave. They were in a cave. In fact, when the rain came, in chapter 19 is when Elijah was almost living on the earth. He went again to the cave, the cave, the altar. Some of you do houses and you have a cave of prayer. The connection factor. What was unique about Obadiah and Elijah that was not in Ahab? What is that? You remember at one point when they are sacrificing, Elijah says, and bring for me two bulls. The sacrifice, the sacrifice. Both of them came with the sacrifice. But what was so unique about this? And he says, and call on your God. So both called on God. What was the distinction factor? It's the connection. It's the connection. Not the one we know in this country. You know, sometimes we go to the interviews and you know you are connected. Come a prophet of bad. Like in, you know the winner. Now I want to give you that example. Ukimaliza unajua mimi najua. Najua mushindi apa. Now, this is the thing. It's the same thing. We call them the God fathers. Now here we have God the Father. Praise the Lord. This is the thing. It's not far from that. And I see people, they go there. They have God, fathers. Here we have God, the father. That is the distinguishing factor. That you are in a storm. Elijah comes and he says, go to that king Ahab and tell him, Elijah is here. Oh, but he's saying, where? You are sending me to that man that is devouring who? Prophets. This man is bringing himself. Because you know, Ahab was killing the prophets. So one had remained. Who was that? Elijah. So Elijah is coming and is presenting. But you know, at the word of God, he knows who he is. Very sharp. He know God there, the father. Not the God, fathers. And he presents himself there. That was a very distinction. He was connected. He was connected. A friend of mine, some of you who drive Land Rover and Range Rovers, you're good. I parked a Range Rover on a, on a hill. When you put on parking, it just connects. You know, it picks. 
and it stands. It knows its stability. It's connected. It, it, some of you have not. I'm daring you to drive Range Rover. On a small hill, when you put on parking, it just speaks. You don't struggle with the foot brake and the hand brake. Connection. And Elijah is able to do that and go that. The Bible also says that Obadiah was a devout man. How devout are you? Are you able to live in a land where we have chaos, where we have so many ease, and God and the people around you can say you are devout? The Bible talks about Obadiah being Ahab's administrator. Some of you think that you only be holy when you become a pastor here. That your prayers will only be answered if you are a senior pastor. By the way, by any fact, that's why when you come here, our prayers as a church is hard from any person, devout man of God. Praise the Lord. I want you to get that, the connection factor. Who is the God that is making our prayer in this place? So that it doesn't look like it's the length of prayer. One of my men that joked with me, uh, somebody prayed a long prayer in a meeting, and he said, those who pray long prayer, this was a joke. In the public, they pray less. In the private, they are compensating. <laughs> Jesus, but, but it could be true. Jesus prayed the whole night, the 40 days, and he comes in and says, be healed, son of man. Did you realize that? You must read the book of Mark, maybe during Christmas, as you celebrate and realize the miraculous work of Jesus. That he was able to say an a word because he knew the connection. He could connect so effectively that he would come and say, be healed, son of man. And I see the same in Elijah. Don't worry about long prayers. They are very good. Don't worry about the short. But be considerate about the connection. Are we together? The connection factor. So that was the Obadiah. While we seem to be worshippers, one would be worshipping from a proper connection while another one is like just a show. And I pray that this not be our culture. Because uh, I don't know when this camera guy is worship. Because we lift up their hands and they, they take our foot. At what point do they lift up their hands? <laughs> Thank you, man of oh God. Thank you for the work you are doing. But sometimes you must learn to be able to move away from the observations and the camera kind of, or when they come across me is when I say, I lift up my hand for the camera. You know, I, I could also see them and say, I am here. So when you need to be lifting up to God always, but you only, you lift because the camera is coming. What I'm saying is, let's learn the connection factor. Our theme verse for next year will be John chapter 15 verse 5, that um, we need to abide in God. And that is the secret of you having an effective prayer. People will accuse you. They, they call Elijah, you troublemaker. Why was he a troublemaker? Because at his word, it didn't rain. Your words are very powerful. I listened to one Tanzanian preacher. You know, Tanzanians speak Swahili. And the Swahili for a doctor is a Muganga. So when somebody was translating in preaching, he said, and there are some Mugangas here, but you know he was a Kenyan, and he was asked to translate whether he meant the Muganga, the doctor, or the witch doctor. But he said, Jesus, the Muganga, like in the Muganga, you muku. What am I trying to say here? I'm saying that we are connected to God, and he's a great God. We don't waver in opinions. While people will be doing less things, we will look at the great God. That is the distinction factor in this place. From the passage we have read, when you look at the connection factor, there are three things I want to mention. One is about conviction, or what we say, the courage to face Ahab. That is verse 15 to verse 17. But verse 20 is very profound when he says, why do we waver between two opinions? There are moments when some of us need to know that God answers our prayer. And in a difficult circumstances, you will tell people that we will not argue over this matter. Why do we waver in these opinions? Let's allow God to be manifested. 
in this place. That God will come and show himself up. Actually, that's the point I wanted to talk about when I talk about the witch. God manifests himself. He will not allow evil to proceed. He will not allow us to continue to infirm and just because of our sins. He will come and thrash evil. In fact, as we wait the second coming of Christ, we were debating and we are driving the other day with my elder, that on the last day when Jesus will come, there will be death of death. What will that be? Jesus will kill death. Now, that is very profound for you to, to know that in our life, Christ is able to destroy evil. And it will be very tragic for some people because he will manifest himself in his great. When death will be killed, the evil people, by the way, for some of you who have not, we're going to have eternal life and eternal death. You need to take care of that. In eternal death, we will continue to live and suffer forever. The Bible says, and they will be thrown in the furnace of fire and they will burn forever. For many of you think that when you don't have eternal life, you will die. You will suffer eternally. Wavering between two opinions, for God or not, the consequences of our connection. May we connect to God, that we don't suffer. Now, when we have fama and God comes and he deals with that, and this is where and what he does here. The second thing in the connection factor, which I look at there, is the sacrifice. There are two sacrifices of two people in the connection. We connect to God by our sacrifice. Praise the Lord. When he said the time to give, the time to be blessed. The sacrifice, the connection. Our effectiveness of prayer comes with sacrifice. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, talks about us not conforming to the ways of the world, but being transformed in the way. The world has a way of accepting our connections. Okay? The things that we offer to the devil. And many of you know the sacrifices we do. May our sacrifices be accepted. That is the connection that I want to talk about. The day that I offer God a service, every day I serve as an usher, as a security person, as a pastor, may my sacrifice be accepted. The Baal's sacrifice was not accepted. Both the bull that they brought and the sacrifice of calling the Lord the whole day. It was ineffective prayer. Praise the Lord. It was ineffective. Is it possible that you can work all your life and all will suddenly look like it was not blessed? This is what I'm talking about. Have you looked sometime and asked yourself, God give me little but it's blessed. Or I have much. Like I have 10 millions and 10 million problems. I'm a 10 millions problematic. God accepts. In this scenario, there were only two bulls, and God accepts the sacrifice, the connection. Our utterances of the word that you speak to God, are they words of adoration? Are they words that God would accept? Or are just some pride pouring of yourself to God when you go before him? The connection factor. Verse 36, you may want to turn there. The prophets of Baal call from morning till evening. And the Bible says there was no answer. Is it possible that we can do prayer meeting every week, every day, and seem like God is silent? It is when you are connected to him, you are not there. Elijah just comes and says, Lord, I thank you. And it happens to be. And do not misinterpret this, that you've been trusting God for many things in your life. And God has not come through for you. And look at that as ineffective. When you pray to God and you know you have done all that is possible, you will not go before God and ravel. Why the God, the, the prophets of Baal were like raveling and doing that? They knew they were worshiping the prophets of Baal. And they knew their, their queen, Jezebel. The Bible says they were of Jezebel. There is an assurance of our salvation which we teach that you will not dare go and look like, God, this delay has been in denial. And you know, Elijah is not praying anything. He's just allowing the situation to seed. And then he picks over to have that because 
he knew his sacrifice is acceptable. Now, the two things I'm talking there, the sacrifice accepted and the sacrifice that is acceptable. Are we together? The when I sing in this place, am I showing off myself? Or is it a sacrifice that is acceptable? The connection in effective prayer. Amen? What about the heart? Verse 41 to verse 42. We didn't read that. Allow me to read. And then that will help us stand in that particular passage. We read um, verse 42 of First King chapter 18. What does the Bible say, verse 1, uh, verse 41 and verse 42? The Bible says this. And Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance rain. Verse 42. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up the top of Camel, and he bowed himself down upon the earth, and he put his face between his knees. Look at those two people. His heart of worship. Heart of worship. Many of us who worship, you know, there are times when that song needs to come from the heart. But they, one of the things, our children have not produced the best music I, that Philip knows and my music needs to know. I want to see their radiance of their singing. That is where we need to get. Music team, you need to get that. I was telling them like this. They didn't get the radiance of their singing. The connection factor. Their heart. This is going just to feast to make themselves happy. But this is a heart of gratitude that transforms the attitude towards God. The connection factor. When you come before God, it matters in distinguishing you and making your prayer effective. The closeness. The closeness. How far are you from the Lord? It seems these people were far from God. To the extent they also knew that God was far. The theological termination in the Old Testament that God was very far. That only prophet would come and connect people. Thank God now that Christ is with us. He's not far. He's in our hearts. He's too close. And they say, pray. Maybe he's asleep. Intervene more. They were far away from their God. Intimacy with God determines the effectiveness of our prayer. You can look at it from verse 2. Famine was meant to give Ahab an opportunity to get back to God. I'm talking about the secret of effectiveness. While many things were happening, for many of you, we didn't read First Kings chapter 17. Why was the calamity happening? The calamity meant to be a pointer for them to revisit their intimacy. Elijah knew God, and that's why he becomes a troublemaker. He said it will not rain. Could it be that the famine we are experiencing in this country is out of our sins? It could be. For many of you who are keen on environment, you've seen how we are cutting down trees and we are doing everything. There are things we are doing. These are natural things that we would actually be considerate about. Forests are being cut right, left, and center. Could it be? It's very possible. Could it be that now the, the famine is in this country? We are being asked to go and revisit our intimacy with God. I don't know how you feel for some of us who watch news, but for the last couple of days, I was really troubled and I said I will preach this. God wants us to sharpen our axe and go back to God. We could thank God that we are in a place and harvesting maize. But animals are dying just because there is no rain. For some of us who are policemakers, I would dare tell you a dangerous prayer that you need to make. How dare can our country import oil from Middle East and yet cannot take water from Lake Victoria to North Kenya? I'm just daring ask you. Could we be so selfish that actually I could go in a hotel that we're going in a dinner, eat 3,000 in a night, and yet I cannot feed somebody, someone? These are things we need to ask ourselves. How far are we connected to God? And is God bringing this calamity to ask us where is our, our way of connecting with him? 
Because the calamity is there. Would we blame others and not see ourselves? We had Elijah, the prophet of God, and the other prophets of Baal. If they turn to God through the calamity in repentance, and that is actually the quest of closeness here, I believe God would have not even killed them. God would have saved the city. How I allowed even the wild animals to die? Just because we are far from God, and we cannot even feel any human. I don't know what you think when you see animals. You know, I watch animals quite a lot, my wife knows. I watch their behavior. So I love them when they die. Today I'm speaking because of the animals that are dying. And I know also people are dying. One as well, son. I see elephants. They are dead on something that we would have done. And we could only think about our salaries because we've not been paid. Could this be God asking us to think about that? We are so away from God that our neighbor can sleep hungry and yet we just smoke your nyama choma and you feel it's good. The closeness factor to God. Why is Ahab not is seeing the king and he want to fight the king? Yet he's also suffering and he's saying, could we move around and see whether there's some animals or some way we could save some vegetables? You know? Him is just filled with himself and far away from God. The Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 8, come near to me or come near to God and I'll come near to God, to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. I'll be talking about some few things later. God is not always far from us, but we are always running away from God. And that makes our prayer difficult. So we shout because we are far away from him. Ukienda kuomba ni unakumbuka, ujashiba, unalia nja. Auliju, unataka mungu, unalia nja. Praise the Lord. You are shouting. Because God is far from you. I've given you this example for many of you who are married. That when you love your wife, you just whisper a word of love and you feel good. But mukikosana muna shout baka neighbor to another. Nini ni mepanyika uko? Because your hearts are far from one another. But when you are close to God, you will not shout. So God is inviting us to draw closer to Him. The last thing is the closet. The closet. Now we have connected. We are close to God. Where do we have a place we call, this is my prayer room? Elijah retreats, thank God to Obadiah. Obadiah had a cave for the prophets of God. A place they would pray from. I like going to the prayer center. I love one in Shiloh, in Nakur. We used to go there when I was in school. It has really caves. What time is it easy to Nalala? Menda Heavens Gate, in Kama, five star. It's a good one. Ukilala, even as ever, Mungu nimefika heaven. There is a really cave in Shiloh on your way to Baat. And that is the first day I, where I proposed to my wife. We went to pray as a prayer team. And the Lord touched me. I opened my eyes. <laughs> now, forget about that. The, that cave is a really cave. I don't know. It's now a long time since I went there. There are things God would speak to us if we went to caves. I know many of us and the prayer team, this is my challenge to you. The, the prayer center in Naku is good. But let's not neglect even the few that are here. God would just want us to retreat in a place that we can seek his face. He will speak to you and you see something you never saw. When I walk with my wife, someone will say, you only saw her. I was praying and the lady said, yes, this is her. Praise the Lord. When you draw intimacy to God, your spiritual eyes open. You no longer see with your carnal eyes. You start to see the sweet voice of God speaking to you. And you start loving your pastor and your elders and your spouse. And those things that you had, intimacy through the cave. Have a place where you kneel when you wake up. That job that you're struggling to get to, it will be better. That is the secret I'm talking about. A cave, a place that you regularly retreat. It could be even your house. 
You say, my children, this is the place. Whoever kneels before God, it's been said, can stand before any man. This is the secret. Uh, Elijah knew his closet. Ahab didn't. They called him troublemaker, imagining he had caused rain not to come. But this same Elijah called rain, and it came. So where is your closet? You can infer to us, First King chapter 19, verse 9. When you read there, you see him again retreating to a cave to pray. Um, I've talked about the, 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 the bars. The, them, their closet was not acceptable. Are we sharpening? Is your closet a place you approach with, with, the, with, the, with the, 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 the righteousness it deserves? Would you sit in the moonlight and wait to God and say, God, today, I want to do this. A special moment of retreating to God. Elijah was a man of God. But why does the Bible retreat and keeps on talking to what even where Obadiah did that he retreated a place? How do you take the place of God when you are here like here? Do you take it as a place, place where you would want to say a prayer to God? God is inviting you that you will be able to pray and God will bring rain. And when he did that in his closet, in verse 39, they all said that that is a true God and we cannot go wrong with him. Some five things or six things and then we'll be close, done. What we do in the closet to make our effective prayer is a passionate prayer. Verse 36 and verse 37, the Bible says, at that time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God. That's a passionate prayer. You cannot speak with such authority if you are not of God. And he said in verse 37, answer me, Lord, answer me. That is an emphasis, it's a passion that is radiating to God. And then uh, that you are turning their hearts back again. Passionate prayer. The next prayer that some of you need to make in the closet is the inner prayer. Inner is resulting, showing sincere, intense conviction. Mark chapter 10, verse 47 to 49, the Bible says, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all more. Then he says, son of David. In his prayer, in the closet, these are still some principles. Are you passionate about God, about this situation? What about the purity in our prayer? Do we just come before God? I know some of us, when we are leading you even in a month, just wants to make a confession. You want to believe that you are okay. It's good to pray that God may forgive your sins. Amen? Then you will be effective. Look at the Lord's prayer. He says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. The purity of our prayers in the closet. So you know, you are going to justify before God. So what will God do if you are justifying yourself? The purity in your prayer is a very critical component. The plane, ask God, don't move around the mountain. Elijah just calls God. When Jesus is praying for bread, he prays for bread. Many of us, um, even in our family meetings, you are asked to plainly pray for food. So you pray for the sick, it's good. Uh, pray for other things. God is asking you to plainly ask. Okay? Um, prayer people in the SGs, when we ask you to pray, give prayer points, you move along the mountain. In a great, if it's famine, we are talking about famine. Let's plainly ask that God deal with the famine. I need a spouse. Yes, today I need a spouse. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We Africans, some of you have done linguistics. We are indirect speakers. So we are also indirect before God. Ask plainly. Pazewangu. Ask plainly. Indirect speakers. We are indirect speakers. It's been known. I studied some anthropology. We are indirect speakers. Okay? Before an African tells you, you need to look at the introduction, wait for the body of the sentence, then know what they are saying. And many of you are on that mountain. 
with your ineffective prayers. Yani umeka. So I ask my sister, nowadays that I'm time I'm busy in the office. Unansalimia ni mipiga. Just say, I want you to send me a prayer. I will call you. Just somebody to say, Tangu tukupata hane nini. Just say what you want. My brethren, I had so many single ladies. You have refused to propose. You are only taking for her debt. But for debt, anakula chips, anangoja, hakuna. One lady comes and tells me for six years, he's just a good brother, but he has not said that sentence. What do we do? Indirect, plainly ask. Plainly ask. Ask and you will be given. Persistently ask. You should not waver, but you should be persistent, particularly if you know what you want is for God. Don't give up. Give up. As much as the effective of prayer may not be, be persistent, be persistent. I really look at people and even my staff. I want to see consistency. I really hate inconsistency. Like in worship team, you get people come today and you don't know when they will come. You know, it's not a good thing. Yeah? Inconsist be persistent. Be persistent. No, be, be persistent and consistent in what you are asking. Persistent on the right thing. You can read that in Mark chapter 25, verse 29. It says, And the woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When he heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloth because she thought, If I just touch his cloth, I will be healed. That was persistent. I could imagine that the crowd is like the way we normally see. Have you ever attempted to say to hi to a president in a crowd? Your hand may go, never try. This lady attempted something like that. And she managed. Her hand was not chopped off. That was persistent. She is a lady. She knew the persistence. Amen? Time is gone, but I would have given you another testimony uh, in terms of persistence. Um, when I was going to school, Somebody promised me that he was the only one after he lacked school fees. And he said, I would pay for his school fees. But he tested my patience quite long. I was very persistent. So one day I woke up and said, does anyone know where they live? <laughs> and I went with my box. My school fees was paid. Praise the Lord. Persistent. I said, there are things you can only try if you are connected to God. You are no, the no does not become your no. You persist and you get there. Amen? Patience that God may answer. Uh, First King chapter 18 verse 44, the Bible says, the seventh time, while these people waited for a long time, you know they were praying to the wrong God. This one knew. The Bible says, verse 44, that the seventh time the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand was rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down from the top, uh, from the rain tops, um, from the rain stops, uh, and, and go before the rain stops you. That was patience, the seventh time. Patience in asking God is a principle in the closet. And so those are some few things I wanted to share with us. And I want to say in conclusion that God wants you to go and make an effective prayer by connecting to him. Know our God by developing intimacy through the closeness. How close are you to God? Many of you know yourself. I told you of a lady that got married to one of our friends. So when we went to the wedding, the friend was just crying. Beautiful lady, he said he's married to a crook. The man knew himself and his friends knew. And they was crying. And then have a closet, a closet, a designated place. We will not struggle many things. When you will be choosing leaders and we don't choose you, because you are connected to God, you will not have any trouble. You just say, go and tell Ahab, I am around. Praise the Lord. I want to pray for some of us. We have so many Ahabs, things that are seeking to destroy our future, seeking to destroy our destiny, seeking to destroy our companies. God wants us to draw closer to him.